Have you made pickles before? No, I've never made pickles before, so I'm learning today. Okay, and who's going to show you? Spark. No matter what you're canning, you always want to use the freshest possible ingredients, whether you get them from your garden. The best ones are hidden. They are. Or get them at a local farmer's market. Thank you, Nessa. One of the advantages of shopping at a farmer's market is that you can talk to the farmer, him or herself, about what they do. We're making a video today about, about pickling. Um, and so we were hoping that you might be able to tell us about the different varieties of cucumbers that you have here today because you've got a bunch of different kinds. Well, lemon cucumbers, and miniature whites, pretty similar in flavor. We also have Asian, you don't have to peel them, they're uh, like a real thin skin. This is Armenian cucumber, it's wow. actually considered a melon. I also have these divas, these are really nice because they're, they're like an English cucumber which is thin skin, don't need to peel it, it's crisp, bitter free, hopeless, you know, all, that, all the good properties. And here's a pickling cucumber right here. These look like nice garlics. And we want to put one or two cloves in each jar. And you can't have too much garlic. You can always use it for something else if you don't need all this for today's pickling. So we'll just grab this many for the time being. If you can't find what you need in your own garden or at a farmer's market, you might have to go to a store. And if you do have to go to a store, go to a co-op if possible. Because co-ops are about food for people, not for profit. And if you shop at a co-op, you're putting money back into your community rather than into the pockets of a few rich, stupid, capitalist jerks. And, and what are you putting in that jar? Dill seeds in this one, mustard seeds in this one. Okay. It's a uh, hippie alphabetical order, which means it's not quite exactly dictionary, but that's okay. It's just D's. And the dill in here. Now, I have a question for you. Yeah? Are all the ingredients going in these pickles organic? I think so. This is... The, um, the garlic is, the pickles are, I bet the, I bet the mustard seeds are, yeah. All the ingredients might not be certified organic. Because you see, the federal government got its head into organic in the past couple of years. Now they have certified organic, meaning that if you're a farmer, you have to pay money to get inspected and get your certification. So some farmers have chosen not to certify because they don't want to spend the money. Other farmers simply don't trust the government, which is a pretty wise point of view to have. Where's the mustard seed? <laughs> Where's the mustard seed? Where is the mustard? Here it is. What two kinds of uh, mustard seeds are there here? Brown and yellow mustard seeds. That's pretty. You also need vinegar when making pickles. Apple cider vinegar probably makes for the best pickles, but apple cider vinegar is pretty expensive. So you can use just white if you want to. And what goes in this jar? Salt goes in this jar. Now a lot of times the recipes will tell you to use pickling salt. All I mean by that is salt that's not iodized. You can also get away with using sea salt, which is easy to get in bulk and very cheap. What are those? Grape leaves! Grape leaves should be young grape leaves, still soft. And the grape leaves help keep the cucumbers crisp. 
punch. If you look back over the course of human history, uh, first people were hunters and, and gatherers. They didn't farm or do agriculture at all. About the time when people did start to farm, that's when the notion of property came into human culture as well. Uh, this is why the primitivists often say we need to go back even before agriculture, because a lot of problems obviously came with, with property. Once you had property, you had wealth. Once you had wealth, you had concentrated power. Of course, once you had concentrated power, then you had tyranny in many forms, wars, etc., like that. So food has been political and has been affecting the environment from the very beginning. Well, we have agriculture now, and it would be very hard to step back out of it. There's not enough resources for us to go all up, live in the woods and have berries and, and, you know, eat squirrels or whatever we would do out there. And so we do need to grow our own food right now to survive. When you go to a conventional supermarket, of course, most of the food's going to be used, is going to have pesticides or herbicides that was involved with growing it. Now, that's not good for you and your health, obviously, to be ingesting these chemicals. It's also terrible for the environment. A lot of groundwater around the country, a lot of rivers are being polluted by all the runoff from all of these chemicals going into the, into the water, making it less drinkable for us. So what we're finding here is that the best way to eat is locally, organically, and in season, if possible. Local food uses less resources. Organic food is better for you and is less harmful to the earth. What was the third one? <laughs> in season. In season means that you only eat the food when it's in season. Tomatoes are a great example. Tomatoes, no matter what kind of technology they use or genetically modified whatever that they put into a tomato, you can't get a good tomato except at the end of summer when it's in season and if it's from close by. If it's been shipped, it's not going to taste good. If it's you know, January, it's not going to taste good. You basically have to have it local. And, and it's also better for you than obviously, you know, too. So canning, why canning then? Well, here in Oregon, as I said, we can grow a lot of food all year round, but some we can't. Fruit, for example, we can't. Cherries, plums, apples, uh, figs, even nectarines and peaches grow really well in this part of the country. Grapes, but they're not going to be in season in January. Well, it's good to have fruit still because of the vitamins and stuff like that. And so that's why it's good to can and to preserve. Um, then, in the wintertime, when you want to have some fruit, you're not buying fruit that was shipped from very far away. You're not buying fruit that was then put into a can by someone else in some factory and who knows where it came from. You instead, you know where it came from. You know the farmer maybe that you got it from. Maybe you know the tree on your street that you went and picked it up off the sidewalk from. You know this food, you have a relationship with this food already, and so now you're able to enjoy it again later, and you continue that relationship. Cucumbers from one of the farmers at the farmer's market. These are cucumbers that don't look quite so nice that he was having trouble selling, so he just let me have them, and in exchange he's going to get some pickles back. And these cucumbers are ones we picked from a garden out back and from a friend's garden. And these are tiny little sweet red peppers from another friend's garden that we're going to throw in with some of the white ones because they'll look pretty. And they'll taste good. That's right. So the way that we'll be making pickles today, we process them in a boiling water canner, which is basically just a big pot that we fill up with water. And we put a rack in the bottom as well. Here's one kind of rack that most people have. As you can see, there's places there to put the jars. This is another kind of rack that you can use. Or if you don't have any kind of rack at all or have a big pot, you can just put flat silverware in the bottom. Basically, you just want to make sure the jars are not touching the bottom of the canner because that'll be too close to the heat and a lot of times they'll break them. Now, usually when I start to do pickles, I fill this up and start it boiling first because it takes a long time for this water to heat up. So I can do a lot of other steps while this is heating up. You want to fill it to the point that when you put jars in, the jars will be submerged to an inch or two above the top of the, of the jars. So we'll be taking each jar, filling it with herbs, spices, and raw cucumbers. And then over the top of that, we'll be filling it in with hot brine. And the brine is made with a ratio of one quart water to one quart vinegar to one fourth of a cup of salt.
Monica! <laughs> what? So we'll put a little extra water and vinegar in to make up for that. These measurements are just uh, approximate. You can, <laughs> they can vary slightly from recipe to recipe and it still tastes good. <laughs> Finding jars to can with can be a challenge. You can buy them all, but they usually cost about nine bucks or 10 bucks for a dozen. So that can be kind of expensive. You can also get used jars at uh, thrift stores like St. Vincent de Paul or Goodwill. Uh, when you have used jars, some people say there's a higher breakage rate on them that some of them will not, some of them will break in the, in the canner. And I've, I've found that to be the case. So what do we put into each jar? A tablespoon of dill seeds. Okay. A teaspoon of mustard seeds. Those are the yellow and brown ones mixed up. Yeah. Okay. And one to three cloves of garlic. And a grape leaf. And a grape leaf. There's a whole art to putting the cucumbers in the jars. You want to get as many in there as you can, packed as tightly as you can. When you pour in the hot brine and then you boil them, they all tend to shrink a little bit. So you don't want to waste a lot of space. The best way to figure out which cucumbers belong in which jars is just to listen to the cucumbers. Do you know what I mean, Mirabai? Yeah, you just sort of, well, do you, how do you want to be cut? Sometimes they just want to be put in holes, sometimes they want to be diced in little pieces. How about that one? I think it wants to be cut in half. How about that one, Spark? Well, this one is too tall for the jar. So I'm going to cut off part of it, and then cut this one into wedges. That's what it told Yep. And a lot of times when you're filling the jars, it's easier if you turn the jar on its side. Let's stuff see. them in. What is this one? So the brine, which as you recall is water, vinegar, and salt, you need to bring to a rolling boil. Once it is, we put it in the jars. And how high do you fill it? You fill it to within a half an inch of the top. What's the next is putting the lids on. And these you should wash before you use them in hot soapy water. The rings you can use over and over again. These only last one time. And how tight do you tighten those? They say to do it finger tight. So as tight as you can do it with your hand basically. And this thing is maybe the most essential canning tool there is. It's the can pick her upper and put her in, also known as tongs. Because these are hot jars and we're about to put them in hot liquid. As we put this in each jar, the water level is rising. Hopefully it'll rise high enough that it covers the top of each jar without overflowing out of the top of the pot. Once this comes to a rolling boil, then we need to process it for 15 minutes at a rolling boil. So, it took a few minutes to get up there, but now it's at a rolling boil. This is where we want to process it for 15 minutes at this high. By doing all of this, we are able to become more independent of this corporate system of control that exists around food in the United States. 
all of this, we can disconnect ourselves from this more if we grow and preserve our own food. So that's why we're making this video, is to encourage people to preserve more of their food. Um, pickles might not be the most nutritious thing that you can, um, that you can can, but there's just something about a pickle. When you bite into that pickle, the sourness, the spiciness, the crispness of it that reminds you of the day maybe that you picked that cucumber or that you picked, you grew it, you got it from a, a local farmer. There's something magical about pickles. When cucumbers are in season to pickle, it's also the hottest time of year. It can get very hot in your kitchen. Oh, there's the timer. It's been 15 minutes. It's time to take the pickles out. <laughs> now, not everyone does this, but I like to turn the jars upside down when I first take them out. That helps them to seal. And we'll let them sit like this for about five minutes and then turn them back over and they should be sealed. That sound is exactly what you're looking for. That sound is the lid popping down. What that means is that a vacuum has been created inside. So these are now sealed. You can also tell just by pushing down on them. And if they don't go up and down, then they're sealed. So all these are sealed. And the next step is to let them cool. All right, so we're ready for our final step, which is that first you wait until the next day for the jar to completely cool. Take off the ring, and then we rinse it off. Cold water is fine for this. During the processing, some of the brine will leak out, and so there'll be salt, kind of a schmutz on the outside of all the jars. And you want them to be nice and clean before you put them away. You also don't want to store them with the rings on them because they can corrode into place, which makes it harder to get it open and which can mess up the seal. We've got one more step left, and this is an important one. We need to label the jar with what's in it and when we did it. The date's especially important because with pickles, you need to wait at least four weeks before you open the jar. If you wait less than that, and open it up. They'll taste too salty. They won't be ready yet. It takes a while for them for them to pickle, for the pickling process to happen. And then as a final step, you just put it in the cupboard somewhere until later. Uh, no room there. Uh, I squeeze it in there. So we'll come back in four weeks. Put that in the refrigerator to chill it. Open it up and they'll be the most delicious pickles we've ever had.